Hi there, Chris Chubb and the Cup Motor Legends. Today I want to talk to you about an old helmet, an old helmet that's still a current helmet. It's the C3 Pro from Shoebirth. So this is the C3 Pro. It's been around since 2004, that's about six years. So this might seem a strange time for us to be doing a review of a helmet that is quite advanced in terms of its life cycle. But we've never done a Solus review on the C3 Pro before. It's still a very fine helmet, so we thought perhaps better late than never. Now, a few years ago, just to put the C3 Pro into context, it was joined by a helmet called the C4. Some of you will remember that the C4 was beset by problems. It had fogging issues, bits were falling off it. The helmet wasn't quite ready for the market. What Super then did, they updated that with a helmet called the C4 Pro. This is basically the C4 Pro. Actually, this is the carbon version, but the C4 Pro fixed all of those problems. But we are still of the view that the C3 Pro is very much the equal, in fact, in some ways, more than the equal of the C4 Pro. One of the things that I should make clear, however, is because there's some misconceptions out there. The C4, when it came out, many people thought it was brought in to replace the C3. That was never the case. The C4 was designed as a more sporting helmet. It was designed for the rider who was riding a sports bike in a more prone position. And the reason you can tell that is that the helmet has a taller visor and a wider visor. So if you're leant forward over the bike, it's quite difficult to do a lifesaver over your shoulder. So the wider visor helps there. And also when you're leant forward over the bike to see down the road, the taller visor helps. So the C4, when it came out, was very much about sporting riders. But what we can say about this C3 is that by now it's a very well proven helmet. It's been a favorite of the police for many, many years and is still today a favorite of long distance commuters and what I suppose you might call world travelers. Now, when the C3 Pro came out in 2004, it replaced a helmet called the C3. It had a number of upgrades. I'm just gonna put this over here. Had a number of upgrades over the C3. It had a little aerofoil here, a spoiler here that was meant to reduce lift. It had better venting, it had a better aerial for the radio, which has become redundant now. Uh, it had a plusher interior and so on. At the time, it was widely lauded as the quietest helmet on the market. And it was quiet, I'm sure many people now know this, because flip lids tend to be quieter because the way we wear them, you can have a much tighter neck roll. That tighter neck roll stops air coming in. When air doesn't come in, it doesn't make noise because obviously you've not got air reaching the, the ears. So it was as a flip little quiet helmet, but at the time in Schubert's wind tunnel, they tested this. This was the quietest helmet of all helmets. In terms of what it is, how it's constructed, the shell is a what we would call a fiberglass matrix. So that means a mix of glass fiber strands and other organic fibers. And in that, it's rather like Shuey's AIM shell. It gives you a very strong shell, but one that is sufficiently soft to absorb energy. At the time, it was heralded as a super light helmet. I've got to say that that's not really the case these days. This helmet, this is a medium size. It comes in at 15, 70 grams. And I've got to say that at that kind of weight, Valentino Rossi is not going to be beating a path to Schubert's door trying to ride in one. Now, normally we are fairly dismissive of helmets that only come in two sizes, in two shell sizes. We think that the optimum number of shell sizes to make sure that everyone from an extra small to a double extra large is accommodated comfortably, the minimum number of shells is three sizes. But all Schubert's only come in two shell sizes. But I've got to say that there's never been a problem with the C3. It's just one of those helmets that works. It fits most people well. The one thing that you do have to remember if you're looking at this helmet is that it's a bit rounder than a Shoei. That's gonna make it better for some. It won't suit everybody, but it's quite an accommodating size. One of the downsides of this helmet is that there, are, there is no facility to change the cheek pads. And when we're looking at a helmet like the C3 Pro, we are these days inevitably comparing it with something like the Shui Neotech. And in a Shui, you can take the cheek pads out, you can take the headliners. You can't do that in a Shubert. I told that in future iterations of this helmet, they're going to be moving towards that. But at the at present, that is not a facility that Shubert can offer. So it's one of those helmets that if you put it on and it fits well, then fantastic, it's right for you. If it doesn't fit you well, 
then you've, got, you've just got to say, I'm sorry, it's not for me. So let's now delve a little bit more into detail. Let's take a closer look at the helmet because in just about every other respect, other than the inability to fit headliners and cheek pads, this is a fantastic and very accomplished helmet. I've mentioned already that the C3 Pro fits a lot of people, fits well. I think it's also a very comfortable helmet. It's not the plushest flip lid on the market. I think the Accolade would probably go to the Shui, the Neotech 2 helmet. That feels a bit more luxurious inside. But this is certainly a helmet that you could wear all day without complaint. Thinking that it's probably aided by the fact that the lining is infused with a, um, a technology called Coolmax that aids breathability aids wicking and what it means is that as you're generating heat in the head you're getting hotter it will help that sweat escape sweating is the way of cooling the body down so it will just make life a little bit more comfortable in terms of looking at some of the functions on the helmet the helmet fastens by means of a micrometric adjuster i think it has has that in common with just about every flip lid on the market i personally don't know of a flip lid that has a, a d-ring so you've also got adjusters on the side. So um, you've, only, you've not only got the adjustment in the center in the micro rattle but you can also um, adjust it at the sides as well. Something that is unique to Shubeth, it has a system called AROS, anti-roll-off system. And in essence, what this means is that the straps that come down, those straps pass through a loop inside the helmet to another strap that's attached to the inside of the back of the helmet. It means that the helmet cannot come off because what happens is if the helmet moves, it anchors those straps to the back of the helmet, it just will not come off. So as I've said, it's a system that is unique to Shubeth, but it's nice to know when you've got a Shubeth, you've got a helmet that in whatever accident, the helmet cannot come off. Looking at the visor itself, it's an anti-scratch visor, as you might expect. It's grade one optical quality, very easy to remove. As you pull it back, there's a couple of little um, buttons, as it were, that, that you press here, and then it just uh, pulls off. Very easy to do and easy to put back on as well. You've also got a very good drop-down sun visor, um, a large button here, not a problem using that with gloved hands. Now, the helmet comes with an anti-fog insert. One of the downsides with the C3 Pro, and it disappoints us when someone like Schubert does this, it is not the top of the range Pinlock 120. This is a top of the range helmet. We would expect it to come with a Pinlock 120. What the importer has told us, we are actually recording this in December 2020, but the, the importer has told us that early, at some point early in 2021, these helmets will start to come through with Pinlock 120s. Not going to be of much help if you're buying a helmet before then. And if you wanted one of these and you were going to be commuting on winter mornings or coming back winter evenings, doing a lot of riding in the cold and the wet, then my view is you'd have to upgrade to the 120. It's annoying that it doesn't come as standard, but um, you might just have to live, live with that. Nice little feature here on the top of the visor that I haven't mentioned. It's got a series of moldings here. These moldings are called turbulators. Again, it's a feature, something that has been designed by Schubert, not seen it on other helmets, but it's meant to reduce the whistling as you're riding along. Now, I've ridden in a C3 Pro for many years. It doesn't whistle, so I can only assume it works. You get a crack position on the C3 Pro. Now, that's very useful. It's useful if you're wanting to um, aid the anti-fogging or um, help clear the visor a little bit. But it's also nice if you're riding along on a hot day, you just want a little bit of air in just to cool, it'll cool you down. The Shui Neotech 2, it's got to be said, does not have a crack position. That's one of the weaknesses of, of, of the Shui. And on the Shui, that is the lowest position. And what it means is as you're riding along, it just pushes it down, it doesn't work. So that's a nice feature to have, um, a good, a good to see it on the C3 Pro. There's another feature that we find on the C3 Pro that you don't see on a lot of helmets. It has a locking position for the visor and you have to close it to make it work. Now, we have a lot of customers who buy a C3 Pro, a C3 Pro from us, sorry. They come in a week or so later and go, I'm very disappointed with this helmet. It's nowhere near as quiet as I thought it was gonna be. So we get the helmet and we go, have you done this? And they go, oh no, we didn't do that. This helmet will only be quiet once you've clicked it shut, because that is what seals the visor against the rubber trim around the edge of the aperture. You have to do that, otherwise it's just gonna be 
a noisy lid. Now, we've already stated that flip lids are quieter. And I think, in truth, even though it's an old helmet, the C3 is still the benchmark in terms of the amount of noise it generates. There's mixed opinion out there versus the, the Neotech 2. Some customers prefer the Neotech 2, they say it's quieter. Some, the C3 Pro. In fact, technically these days, Schubert tell us that the quietest helmet, as far as they're concerned, the quietest helmet in their range, range is the C4 Basic. But all I can say is that the C3 is a very quiet helmet. Now, flip lids are quieter, as I hope most people realize, because um, the reason is because the neck roll sits tighter against the neck. Because of the way we put on a flip lid, we pull it wide and then it rebounds into the neck, it sits tighter against the neck. And because it sits tighter against the neck, air can't come in and reach the ears. And when air can't come in and reach the ears, there's less noise. In that, it's normally aided. A good quality flip lid is aided by a good chin curtain, and certainly the C3 Pro has a good chin curtain. But there is a downside to a quiet helmet. And basically it's this, it's that if air cannot get in easily to generate noise, then it's difficult equally to expel air. And that becomes a problem when you're riding in extreme cold and when it's damp outside, because that can lead to fogging. Now, let me just explain the fogging or condensation in helmets, why it happens, what it is. As you're riding along, you are generating warm, moist air inside the helmet. That's your breath. Outside, it's very cold. You're doing 60, 70 miles an hour. The wind chill effect makes that an extreme cold temperature that's on the outside of the visor. What that does, that extreme cold, takes the vapor that is your breath on the inside of the helmet and it transfers it from a gas into a liquid. When your breath sits inside the visor as a liquid, that is fogging. It's millions of tiny little droplets of, of water. And that obviously stops you being able to see out of the helmet. A couple of things you need. You need the pin lock. And as we've said, this doesn't have the pin lock. Hopefully that's going to be changed somewhere down the road. You also need to be able to use the venting effectively. And the good news is that the C3 Pro has very good venting. Two things that you need to do. You need to use the chin vent. Now, Schubert tell us that on the C3 Pro, 90% of the air that comes into the helmet when the vents are open is through the chin vent. And that's exactly what one wants. In terms of clearing condensation, what that means is that as you're riding along, you've got cool air coming into the helmet. So then you've got cold air on the inside as well as on the outside. It reduces the differential and it takes the fogging away. You need to do one other thing. You need to open the brow vents because what that then does as air hits the helmet, it pulls it through, it's dragging that air that's in front of the face out. And what you want to be doing is having this clean flow of air, cold air comes in, dries, pulls out, but you're always getting more air in and more air out. So if you really want to keep this helmet um, defogged as, as it were, you must be able to use both the vents. Finally, there's one little feature that applies to Schubert helmets that I'm going to have to get Graham to do a close-up sh shot of because it's quite a strange little feature and I need to try and describe it. Inside the lining, where the air comes in to the helmet, there are two holes in the EPS in the lining of the helmet. If you pull out the lining, the comfort lining, you get two little things that are called bunny ears. Now, you can take those bunny ears, unfold them, and you can block air coming into the hel helmet here. Why might you want that? Well, you don't want that if you want your helmet to um, clear itself, but if you're out on a dry day that's a very cold day and you just find that you're getting cold, there's too much cold air coming into the helmet, that's giving you a headache, then you can release these bunny ears, put them over the holes and stops the air coming in, keeps you a wee bit warmer. A wee bit strange, but again, a nice little feature. When the C3 Pro first came out, it took a comm system from a company called Cardo. And what you had to do, you had to change the entire neck roll and all of the brains of the system were fitted into this neck roll. The buttons were in the neck, that neck roll. It worked okay, but a few years ago, Schubert moved across from Cardo to work with Senna and this helmet now takes a unit that is called the SC10U. It's a particularly neat system. It doesn't 
require a box on the side. You end up with your buttons here on the inside of the helmet. Now, that's a downside for some people because it means that if you do want to alter the volume or change channels, you have to open the visor. My personal view is unless you're Valentino Rossi, it doesn't really make a great difference. In fact, I quite like the buttons on this helmet because they are, because you've got one in a vertical plane and one in a horizontal plane, you can easily work out which button is which. It's a little bit harder to do, for example, on the Neotech 2. Works really well. You have just the nicest button microphone. In the old days on the Cardo system, you had this great big boom that was sat in front of your mouth. Here, there's this little boom. You barely know it's there. It works really well. The system is easy and quick to fit. One of the advantages is if you've got friends who've got shoes and you've got a shoe berth because maybe it fits you better, you like it, that you prefer it in some, some ways, there are no problems talking to one another because both are based on a Senna system. Now, just one word on the comms. If you are going to buy a comms with a helmet, it doesn't just apply to this one, it applies to all helmets. Make sure you buy the comms at the same time as you buy the helmet, because then you can save the 20% VAT. The HMRC allows us when we combine a zero rated helmet with a, an electronic device, in other words, the comms, we can take the VAT off the comms. So I think that saves you these days. Depends on the unit, but on something like this, I think it saves you about 60 pounds. It's worth doing if you are going to have comms. Just want to talk through some of the other nitty gritty stuff on the helm helmet. It does not have dual homologation. What that means is that the C3 Pro technically can only be ridden in a closed position. You cannot ride it in an open position. And in that it differs to the Shui Neotech 2, which is dual homologated. You can ride it open or closed, but you would not ride a helmet like this open. It is just dangerous. It's a barn door. Why would you do it? So it's a difference, but it doesn't, it's not really very meaningful. You would only ever ride it open at 20 miles an hour in town or if you were at a petrol station, just to get a little bit of, of cold air in and so on. I've also seen police in London for years wearing their C3 Pros, riding their C3 Pros with the top open, with the flip lid open. So in reality, I do not believe that it's a major problem. I think if you drove past a plainclothes police car at 70 miles an hour with it open, they might want to have a conversation with you. But as long as you're sensible, I cannot see that the dual homologation makes much difference. In terms of sizes of this helmet, I've mentioned already that in some ways, disappointingly, it only comes in two shell sizes, but that does equate to seven different sizes that takes us from a pretty small 53 right up to a frankly, quite huge 65. It makes this one of the largest helmets, certainly the largest flip lid helmets. And when somebody comes into the shop here and they come in because they know we do helmet fitting and they can't find a helmet to fit them anywhere, we will often take them to a C3 Pro because with its round fit and the fact that it's 665, it does fit a pretty large head. Now, I want to just remind you, I touched upon it earlier on, the head shape because this is a helmet that has a fairly round head. So if you are looking to get a C3 Pro, I think you probably need to go somewhere where you can compare it with a Shui because the head fits are very different. So in another video we did earlier in the year, we spoke about different head to head shapes. Now, you might be surprised to learn that both of these individuals have exactly the same measure of head. That's more like a Shubert head that's my, more like a, shoe, um, a shoey head. So just because you were, let's say, a 53 in a shoey helmet, that doesn't mean you will be a 53 in a shoe berth. And there's a scenario where you go, that's all right, I'll go for a bigger helmet. Because, but if you go for a bigger helmet to accommodate your head front to back, it's going to be wider on the sides. So getting a helmet like this to work properly, to be as quiet as it's meant to be, you need to have it fitting pr properly. And you need to go to a dealer who knows what they're on about, who has the ability to, um, if this doesn't work, who has the ability to fit the cheap pads into, say, the Shoei, because these are great helmets, but they're only great helmets if they fit uh, properly. And you need to know when you buy one that it's going to fit the way it's meant to fit. I want to finish now with a few words about another helmet that's a relation of the C3 or the C3 Pro, and it's the E1. The E1 is Schubert's adventure helmet, but it is in essence, in all of its construction, in all of the key functional features, 
it is just a C3 Pro. But let's go across and let's look at it. So the E1 is not a bad idea. Obviously, somebody came up with this idea in the Schubert marketing department and someone must have thought, no one does an adventure flip lid. Let's do one. It's a good idea and I can see the benefits of it because if you're riding somewhere hot and you want to get a bit of extra air in and when you are off road or crossing a desert, something like that, there are times when you desperately need more air in, the flip lid is a good idea. I would say that there are a couple of downsides. One is that this is, whilst I said that when the C3 Pro was initially launched, people spoke of it as a lightweight helmet. In the modern world, it's not a light helmet and it's not as light as many off-road helmets. I think it's a pretty heavy helmet for off-road usage. It's also, there's a problem, I think, if you are riding through heavy sand and so on. I went to Morocco earlier this year. We had some incidents. I ended up falling off a, a fair amount. I got a lot of sand into the mechanism here and there came a point when it just stopped working and eventually um, I had to ride with it only in the open position. I couldn't close it. So I think it's a great idea, but I'm not sure that this is a helmet that you would really go seriously off-roading in. If you're doing a bit of gentle off-roading, a bit of kind of adventure riding on tracks and so on, then I think it's a fantastic idea. But as a serious off-road helmet, then I'm just not sure that it quite cracks it. In terms of the differences between the C3 Pro and this helmet, there are two main differences. First is the vents. People look at it and go, it's a different shape. It's actually not a different shape. This chin piece is just a moulding that clips on the front and replaces the chin vent on the C3 Pro. It works well. The idea is that if you're riding off-road, you need at times to get more air in. So the larger vent allows more air in. But the downside is that it makes the helmet a little bit noisier because more air is coming in, more air is re reaching the ears. So what I would say is if you are looking at an adventure helmet or looking at this helmet purely because you've got an adventure bike, but actually nearly all of your miles are on the blacktop or commuting on the motorway, then I'm not sure it's such a good idea because you're going to be wearing a helmet that's going to be much noisier. Same applies really when it comes to the second difference, which is the peak. Now, again, a lot of people who get themselves an adventure bike look around, they've got to get an adventure suit, they've got to get those big heavy boots, and what they particularly want is a helmet with a peak. But if you're riding most of your miles on road, I'm not sure that that's a good idea to have a helmet with a peak, particularly with this helmet, because I'm afraid to say, I do not think that this is a particularly good peak. I've seen adventure helmets where the peak is really solid, really buttoned down. But with this one, if it conflicts with the air coming over the top of your screen on the bike, it can oscillate, it can generate extra noise. Ultimately, it's not a problem because you can take the peak off. There are some blanking plates in the side. You can ride this helmet. If it doesn't work with the peak, you can ride it without the peak. But I would say that if you're looking at an adventure helmet to ride on the road, I would say don't bother with that with the peak. I also question in truth why you would want a peak on a helmet like this because, of course, you've got the drop-down sun visor. I know there are adventure riders out there who convince themselves that it's far easier to nod their head and block the sun out than it is to do the, the sun visor, but I think that is a pretty marginal case. So what I would say is it's a lovely idea, but you need to be aware that this is potentially a helmet that's going to have problems with the peak and it's going to wee beat, it's going to be a wee bit noisier as well. But if this is what you want, if you're doing a lot of your, um, if you're doing a lot of lightweight adventure riding as well as on-road riding, then I think the E1 works really well. So that was the C3 Pro and its close cousin variant, the E1. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned so far is price. And I've got to say that I think the C3 Pro is a bit of a bargain. In white, which is always the cheapest color, it is priced at 400 pounds. The equivalent Neotech 2 in white is 520 pounds. The C4 Pro in white is £550. So given that, in our view, the C3 Pro on many scores is every bit the equal of the C4 Pro and even the Neotech, you can save yourself £120, you can save yourself £150. I think it's a fantastic helmet. Anyway, if you want to look at the entire range or other flip lid helmets, then visit the website motolegends.com. If you want to learn more about the C3 Pro, go into a little bit more detail, then click on one of the links on the screen 
Sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there. That will take you to directly our C3 Pro page. There you can check out the spec in a little bit more detail. You can check availability. And if you want to buy one, obviously you can do that there and then. Now, when you buy from us, we try to make the process simple, straightforward and risk-free as we possibly can. No delivery charge on anything you buy from us, or rather no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Totally free returns. And what's more, we give you 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price promise in the business. John Lewis is rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold guarantee. We go one stage better. If you can find anybody selling anything that we sell at a price that is below ours, we will beat that retailer's price by a full 10%. If the retailer is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions attached to our price beat, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, then I suggest you visit the web and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to see bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website at the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up, click on there, within seconds you'll be in business, in future you'll receive bulletins from us. If however you wanted to receive your information in future, videographically, that is to say in this form, then we would be delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Wanted to finish with a play for our fabulous little shop here at Motor Legends. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. As I've said, it's a small shop, it's got a small footprint, but actually it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds worth of stock arranged over three floors. Technically makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we are in our view, far more than just the amount of stock we have in the building. We're about service, we're about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come and see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to taste one of Sean's mum's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.